Welcome back to U.S. Farm Report. Trusted, timely, tradition. Severe planting delays across the Midwest and the Northern Plains last year created a lot of angst among farmers. And in some areas, those delays turned into the reality of prevent plant. Well, this year, those concerns are already popping up again. As Michelle Rook found out during the CHS Ag Industry Day in Grand Forks, North Dakota this week. There's a lot of optimism for the 2023 planting and growing season here in the Northwestern Corn Belt among producers and industry leaders. Because even if grain prices cool off some, they are looking at a strong outlook for production this year and lower input costs. Gio Richardson with the North Dakota Ag Weather Network shared an improved weather picture with farmers for the upcoming spring planting and growing season. I think there will be more moisture uh, this year. Temperature-wise, perhaps not as warm as the past couple of years because the moisture means more clouds, but I still think we'll get close to average on that. And so if my analogs, the way I forecast past year similar to this year, I think it'll be a pretty good growing season. Farmers are also excited about 2023 due to the cooling of input costs like fertilizer to help maintain their profit margins. And I was able also last year to buy my fertilizer when it kind of took that downturn in February. Um, right now, I did put some fertilizer on last fall because we were trying to take, try to get a few steps ahead for 2023. It's been nice to see a little bit of a little step back from some of those input prices. So prices have been fairly steady. So we're okay with that. We're seeing a little dip in the most recent weeks. And so we'll see how it, that performs down the road with farmers buying, retailers buying, and where that will shake out. Supply chain issues are easing, transportation is improving, and the availability of inputs, including crop protection, is also better than the last two seasons. I would say availability looks better than it did last year. Um, there's, there's some things that have gone up in price coming into this year, and there's some reductions, you know, the glufosinates, glyphosates are, are down compared to a year ago, but there's some other basic manufacturer stuff that's, you know, probably a 5% increase. With moderating costs, grain and oilseed prices still relatively strong and specialty crops all fighting for acres. What do market experts think the acreage mix will look like in the Northwestern Corn Belt? I think we're going to see more corn acres, especially in the southeast part of the state. I mean, last year was a good indication that corn can make it through just about anything. So I think we will see an increase. I think prevent plant will be a little bit lower this year. That'll help with some of the increase in acreage. Spring wheat, I think, is going to lose of some acreage. I don't see the incentive to plant wheat, especially with the losses that we've seen as of late. And I think bean acres will see a little bit of an increase. When you talk about North Dakota, you got to talk about Ukraine also, because a lot of the oil seeds that could be grown in the Ukraine can also be grown in North Dakota. And so sunflower, sunflower oil, canola, uh, we have these uh, new plants that are supposedly opening up. The, this market's on fire for oil seeds and we're gonna need every acre we can up here. The acreage mix is also influenced by February crop insurance guarantees with corn at 591, soybeans at 1376, spring wheat down 32 cents at 887, and Durham wheat up 67 cents at 1011. Crop insurance price will have an impact? It will have an impact. I think that'll impact the spring wheat. You know, that'll take some acres away. I think some of those could go towards the Durham market because it's higher. I do think that, you know, corn coming in the same as last year will, that'll kind of stabilize the acres there. With grain prices still at historically high levels, the general advice from market gurus is to sell new crop on the normal spring rally because if production rebounds in the Corn Belt, it could pressure prices into harvest. I think there's too many ifs out there right now, Michelle, and we're really gobbling up and eating all those ifs from those USDA outlook forums. You know, we think we'll have a perfect planting season. We think we'll have large yields. I think those ifs come in. I think we have some weather scares. We rally up. But I do think this is the year to really be very aggressive before harvest and sell the rally that you've got coming up here because these higher interest rates are going to make the cost of carry a much bigger deal moving forward. So producers with a good marketing and financial strategy believe 2023 may be as profitable as the last few years as long as Mother Nature cooperates. Reporting from the CHS Ag Industry Day in Grand Forks, I'm Michelle Rook for U.S. Farm Report. Thanks, Michelle. And it's hard to believe that planting is actually already underway in parts of South Texas. All right, well, our marketing discussion just kicked off in our last half hour. But what else are analysts watching? Plus, we need to get into the cattle market. That's next with Brian Grady and Sam Hudson. U.S. Farm Report at Ag Industry Days is brought to you by the Mosaic Company, creating innovative advanced crop nutrition products and practices.